Okay. I guess I'm really didn't want to say hello. And she allowed me to take her thing, but I don't want it because. Yeah. Oh, Amarillo's coming. Hey, baby girls. As you can tell, uh, almost died. my teeth are not that very good. It's not lined up very good. And they have cavities. actually means that why what does it mean does this even have comments what that way is sabotage what does that mean Yeah, I just... Avatar? Avatar. Wait a minute. And... Human plus horse? Isn't that what... I don't think so. Just a second. I, I happen to know that... Hey, Google? What does sabotage mean? Sabotage has two different the, meanings. Starting with the most common one. Oh, it might be the same word, just. Delivery be strong, damage, or obstruct. It might not be a word. It might just be something that I think is a word just I made up before. Watching. What? Jeez. Okay, a human, half human, half horse is a centaur. Close enough. Close enough. Hello, Internet. <laughs> White. That's like saying David and Divot are close enough. Hey. Well, Avatar and centaur. Oh, 
come up to my knees in Volcano Beach. In the rivalry, Pepsi would always be the one playing catch up, declaring bankruptcy not just once, but twice in both 1923 and 1931. Fluctuating sugar prices hit them hard. In fact, during this period, the Coca Cola Company was offered the opportunity to purchase the Pepsi Cola Company three times. Three times! For as low of a price as $35,000. That's like half a million by today's standards. Not a lot. And Coca Cola declined each and every time. A Not a lot in company standards. Watching food games. for a nickel. That's twice the amount of beverage that other soft drinks were offering at the time. This is the move that single handedly brought them back from extinction. Anyway, in these cola wars, you can tell that Pepsi has always had a bit of a chip on their shoulder, constantly trying to punch up at their older and more successful rivals. You probably know what food really is. And especially the main channel. Oh boy, you definitely know that. Pepsi's more than okay. So, in 1989, Pepsi, so determined to get a leg up over Coca-Cola, made a deal with the USSR to become the exclusive soda for the Soviets. Their payment? A fleet of warships that, at the time, would make Pepsi the sixth largest naval power in the world. Pepsi, my dude, don't you think you're taking this whole Cola War thing up? Did you literally? Now, I first stumbled across this little factoid during my research for the Did Coca-Cola Invent Santa episode, but this couldn't possibly be true, right? Like, like, why would a soda company need a navy? Where would they put one? And why would they accept it from the USA's biggest Cold War enemy, the USSR? Something here didn't add up to me. And yet there was headline after headline. New York Times, Washington Post, Business Insider, Esquire, tried sources of the news. So today, Matt Pat is entering both the Cola Wars and the Cold yeah. War for himself to bust this story I wide open. I may not be particularly bubbly, yeah. but when it comes to fact-finding, uh, you got to rely one day Although the big climax of the story happens in 1989, it actually begins all the way back 30 years prior in 1959. During the height of the Cold War, the USA and the USSR held exhibitions in each other's countries, mainly because the USSR wanted to open trade with the US. And so, of course, the US government saw a chance to take down communism from the inside using our strongest weapon, capitalism. And so the US got to work designing the perfect sales pitch to the USSR, with the exhibition showing off our cars our fashion, even our houses. An exhibition full of American ingenuity provided by American companies all eager to be trade partners. The Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev, was less than impressed by this display, basically finding fault with everything that he could. Yeah, are you forgetting that you're recording yourself? No. It was, at least until then, Vice okay. President Richard Nixon walked the Soviet leader over to the Pepsi. Hey, wait, it's faint. Don't sing the day. Soft cam with that part. Yeah, they did. With Watch your own videos back. Water. Okay. Oh, boy, I'm starting to edit them. But now they can see me. I don't care. Because it's okay. Cold War is still going, and the man responsible for that Pepsi booth, Donald M. Kendall, is now CEO of the whole company. His newest goal? Capitalizing off that early success with the booth by getting Pepsi into the USSR. Giving the company a crucial leg up against Coke in the Eastern Bloc. And you know what? It works. He makes a deal to ship Pepsi syrup to Russian-based bottling plants in exchange for Pepsi having exclusive rights within the USSR. How's that taste, Coke? Except, um, you know, there's, there's just one teeny tiny problem with that arrangement. Payment. You see, the Soviet's ruble was basically valueless outside of the USSR, and it wasn't even allowed to be taken abroad. So Pepsi needed to come up with a creative solution, and they found it in the form of Russian vodka. They decided to do things the old-fashioned way and used bartering. They traded soda for Russian-made Stilichnaya vodka, giving Pepsi exclusive seller's rights over here in the U.S. And it worked. At least for a while, Pepsi became the first capitalist product sold in the USSR. But Matt, Matt, I thought we were talking about Pepsi getting a name. Not a 
bunch of vodka. Don't worry, I'm getting there. You see, by 1989, Pepsi was crushing it over there. It was selling 300 million rubles worth of Pepsi in the USSR, translating to roughly $4 million. And remember, that's 1980s money, making it closer to like 9 million of today's dollars. Demand for the stuff was way up. Everything was looking great for Pepsi, except for the fact that the value of vodka had dropped significantly. It just wasn't earning back what Pepsi was putting in. And so Pepsi, wanting to keep on earning them dollar dollar bills, had to figure out something else that they could possibly get paid with. And this is where the Navy comes in. According to the New York Times, the Soviets offered 17 submarines, a cruiser, a destroyer, and a frigate in order to pay for all that Pepsi. Donald Kendall even reportedly joked to President Nixon saying, we're disarming the Soviet Union faster than you are. How does a bunch of ships pay for soda? Well, the idea was that the ships were obsolete to the Soviets, so they give them to PepsiCo, who could then send them to the Hello. Soviet to the sale of said... Firepower, the manpower, anything like Bye. that. Let's assume that we're calculating Pepsi 